Hello everybody, uh, in this video I thought I'd talk a little bit about what is and is not karate. And the reason I decided to make this video was in a response to a number of comments and bits of feedback that I get with people claiming that some things that I show are not karate. For example, you know, whenever I throw a hook punch or lift my heel up or have a guard up, people will go, oh that's boxing, that's not karate. Whenever I show a throw, you know, they'll go, oh but that's not karate, that's judo or wrestling. Whenever I show some trapping, They'll go, yeah, but that's not karate, that's Wing Chun or Filipino martial art. And I always find these comments fascinating, mainly because me and those people making those comments obviously have very different views about what karate is. So I thought that may make for an interesting video, an interesting topic to explore. So I think the first thing we need to acknowledge is that karate, although categorised as a traditional martial art, the true tradition has been one of constant change. Not a single generation has passed on the art of karate exactly as it was taught to them. A lot of the things that people regard today as being traditional are actually quite modern. You know, they were introduced relatively late and we'll talk about that more, more, more later. Uh, Funakoshi, you know, is regarded as the father of modern karate. Well, that, that term in itself tells you a lot, right? The father of modern karate. So he's, he's given credit as being the person who gave birth to you know, modern karate. Well, if there's a modern karate, there must have been an older karate too, right? Um, and Funakoshi's clear about this in Karate Do, uh, My Way of Life, his book. He said um, that the, the karate that high school students learn today is very different from the karate of 10 years ago and is a long way indeed from the karate I learned as a child in Okinawa. So this karate has changed over time. Funakoshi doesn't regard this as a bad thing either. In the same book he says, you know, the times change, the world changes and martial arts must change too. You know, again, you know, how could the father of modern karate be against innovation because he is credited with starting modern karate, right? So a lot of the times when people go, that's not karate, what they're actually saying is that's not karate as it's done now. Right? But if you want to look back at this older karate, it's a much more holistic system. You can see it for yourselves. You, know, you look at the karate texts of the 1920s and 30s, for example, you'll see a lot of throwing in there and gripping in there. Now, although that's not widely practiced in a lot of karate schools now, it was. And there's no reason why we can't do it as part of karate now. I do. But whenever I show one of these traditional throws or throws out of the cat, there'll be some who'll go, yeah, but that's not karate, that's judo. I think the fact I'm doing it in a white suit makes it look like judo too. And although I would never inflict this on the world, I've often wondered that if I did the same throw in a singlet, if people would then go, oh, but that's wrestling, right? You know, of course, you know, judo and, 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 and wrestling have these throws within them, but karate had them too, independently. I've done another video on what I call the common origin myth, where you know a, a method was formulated in one art and then spread to all the others. That's not the way it worked. Different people in different parts of the world worked out you know, good ways of fighting, and they all came up with very similar things when it came to striking, locking, and throwing. So when uh, I practiced my karate, I, I like to have that older stuff in there too, because I think it's very relevant to the modern world. A lot of modern karate is practiced as a, a means to defeat a fellow karateka within a given combative framework. Well, I, I'd like to know that I can handle people who are non karateka as well. I, I don't just want to be protected by the rules or the way we agree to fight. As one of my teachers always used to say, he said, you can be a tenth that on your feet and a white belt on your back. You know, I've said before, I don't want to be a beginner at anything. I can't be an expert at everything, but I want to be a beginner at nothing. So for me as a karateka, you know, I want to make sure that I understand gripping and locking and throwing and choking as well as all the striking. So where do I look for that? Well, I look to the, the cutters and I look for the old art and it all fits together beautifully. So when a lot of people say, you know, that's not karate, what they mean is that's not karate as it's done now, right? For them. But it was part of the karate of the past and there's no reason why it can't be part of karate again. A lot of people, it is part of their karate today. So yeah, when people say it's not karate, what they're really saying in a lot of occasions is, that's not karate as we do it now. So we've talked about how people define karate as it's done now. And there's another karate, a karate before that, that's still karate, right? But it works the other way around too. 
you will get some karate who will go, well, this is how it was done then, and that's karate and only karate, and anything modern that doesn't fit with what was done then, that's not karate either. So you know, I'll give some you know, examples of this. Training methods is a big one. So you know, traditionally, we have things like the makiwara. Well, I would suggest that modern impact equipment has superseded that. The makiwara still has its place. It still has some uses, and I understand why people like training with it. But a, a pair of focus mitts with a good holder, you can hit them from lots of different angles and directions. You can hit them in combinations. You can grab hold of the person as, as the giving target. You can combine them with throwing. They're a much more versatile and effective piece of kit. You have moving targets. You've got to adjust, adjust for distancing. But, you know, they weren't traditional in the, in the sense that, you know, Itosu and Funakoshi and all those, they didn't have them. But if they had them, they would have used them. You know, I mean, I know for a fact that they, they, they would have done they were always looking to make the art better. So if we could go back in time and go, here's a big bag of focus mitts, that we nowadays would be practicing traditional focus mitt drills. Just as I know we will be in like a hundred years time. You know, people will be talking about all oh, these traditional focus mitt drills developed way back in the 2020s, you know. Uh, so we, we can ad ad adopt modern training methods. You know? The other thing with it as well is we can adopt uh, modern techniques as well. Techniques that maybe weren't part of the karate canon, we can bring them into the uh, part of the karate canon. And it's funny how people have real double standards on this. So if you were to ask someone, you know, name a karate kick, I, I would say there's at least half will go roundhouse, Milwaukee get the quintessential karate kick. But if you look in the, the karate textbooks of the 1920s and 30s, it's not there. You know, like, you know, there's um, oblique kicks and stomping kicks and side kicks and front kicks and knees. Roundhouse kick isn't there. It wasn't part of the karate canon at that point. It came in relatively late. And as I like to point out to my students, right, from the time that, karate, uh, that the roundhouse kick first appeared in print, first appeared in the karate text, right, from that time to when I walked into a dojo and learned roundhouse, that's less time than, be, than between the first UFC and now. Right, so if I'd watched that first ever UFC and had gone, right, I'd like that hold that Hoist Gracie did, and I make it part of karate, if I'm teaching it to my students, that is more traditional than roundhouse kick was when I learned it. There's other things as well that people regard as being, you know, really, really traditional. Um, like the, the belt system, you know, a, a training in, in white geese. But, but again, all of that is relatively recent. But, but, but it, it's got that traditional label on, 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 it, on it now. So I, I think we shouldn't close ourselves off to new things. Because again, you know, we see roundhouse kicks in there and geese are in there and belts are in there. And people regard that as being traditional. Well, why have we closed the doors all of a sudden? If someone shows me a, a, a method, a training method or a technique or something that can be effective, you know, then I'm going to bring it into the karate just as the old masters did. Again, in Funakoshi's writing, he talks about how uh, Itosu and Izato, his two main teachers, would send him to different martial artists to, to learn their specialities. And he, he says about how oh, this is a good thing and Izato and Itosu suffered from no petty jealousy of other masters, as he put it. They would go, you know, go and learn this from the experts. Well, you know, modern karateka, you know, if you can learn something from a, a, another karateka or a practitioner of another art or even when it comes to physical training, if you can learn a way that's going to make you fitter, faster, stronger, more flexible, that's modern, then we should bring it in. You know, it should become part of karate because karate has always done that. It's been quite eclectic. If something proves its value, like roundhouse kick, then it becomes, becomes a part of it. So I don't think we should just go, yeah, just because it wasn't done way back then, it's not part of, of karate. You know, it, it, it will be. <laughs> it will be. Over time, things will adapt and change. I think this next one's probably one of the big ones. So when people say that's not karate, what they're often saying is that's not karate as I do it, or that's not karate as my style does it. You know, they want to claim that karate is theirs and theirs alone, and they have the right to define it for the rest of humanity. Right? And unsurprisingly, I don't buy that. As a friend of mine once pointed out, nowadays karate as a term is a little bit like athletics. You know, it, it covers a related set of disciplines, but you could be a marathon runner and be an athlete, or you could be a shot putter and be an athlete. Both of those are competing in athletics, but they're two very different pursuits. 
So, you know, you'll get people who are very uh, um, combative orientated in their karate. You get people who do it as sport. You get people who do it as art. You get people who do it as, as culture. You know, there's lots of different karates within there and lots of different mixes, let alone style nuances. You know, but sometimes people like to go, no, I am the sole arbiter of what karate should be. One example I always find surprised is whenever I throw a punch with a guard up and my back heel lifts, people go, but that's not karate. That's not the karate way to punch. When I started karate as a kid, right, in my very first ever lesson, I learned to punch with a guard up and a heel off and I learned to punch with a heel down and my hand on my hip. I learned two gakazukis. The traditional, traditional drills that were part of that school's curriculum also included drills with guards up and heels off. Right? The, the, the heel up, down thing is a topic for another video, but heel up gives maximum rotation. You generally get more power, but you lose stability. So there are times tactically where you want the heel down, particularly if you're clinched, which is why you, know, you do see heel up in the kata too, which is why you often see a lot of heel down in the kata. It's because you need that stability as, as, as well as the power, right? But, but yeah, it's not boxing, it's karate. As I was always taught it. It's been a fundamental part of karate since... I, I started. Uh, so those kind of punches have always been karate, part of karate as I did it and, and I've taught it. Indeed, they were part of karate as my instructors learned it as well. You know, so if you look at um, like the Oyagumite days of Wado, for example, you know, you see there, guards up, heels off. You know what I mean? And I, I, that was the style that I started in. Don't regard myself as a Wadaru practitioner now because I've had lots of different influences and I just do what I do now and label it as karate. But in there, guards up and heels off was, was common as anything. If it wasn't in the system you do, then it may not be part of your karate. But you can't say it was, it's not part of karate as a universal whole. You know, um, and I think we need to kind of get away from that. He's you know, thinking that you know, anyone has the right to define karate for anyone else. It's difficult if you try and say, well, what is karate? It's hard. You know, national governing bodies of karate have struggled to come up with a definition of karate they're all happy with. For me, I think the one thing that kind of defines it is, you know, the lineage is one that, that, that sprouts from, you know, the, the Okinawan karateka, your Funakoshis, your Mabunis, your Motobus, you know, your Itosus. That's the lineage, right? But of course, it's changed and adapted and branched on, on, on the way. But I know karateka who I have next to nothing in common with, despite us sharing the same label. Because um, there are many, many different karates, and it's, it's always been that way as well. There's, there's Funakoshi again, let's quote him again. When we're talking about, you know, the, the various ways we see the cat has been done. You know, he said that there are not now, nor have there ever been, any hard or fast rules regarding the performance of kata. It is therefore not surprising they vary with the times or even from instructor to instructor. You know, even in Funakoshi's time, there was variations in the way people, people did things. And as time goes on, that's just going to get bigger and, and, and better. So if you're doing a form of karate that you're happy with and it's great for you, then I'm pleased for you. But you don't get the karate, the, um, define karate for, uh, for everyone else when everyone else's experience is different. As I say, you know, whenever I throw a punch with a guard up, people are like, it's boxing now. It hasn't been for me, you know what I mean? There's a little kid within the first hour of taking up karate, it was there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been there ever since, you know, as, as, as part of my karate. You know, other users' experience may vary. But for me, you know, it's, it's always been part of, uh, of, of what I've done. So, yeah, you know, when people say that's not karate, what they're often saying is that's not karate as I do it. That's not karate as, uh, as my style does it. But who's got the right to define karate for everyone else? Final one I want to talk about, I mean there are other aspects, but the final one I want to talk about in this video is when people say that's not karate, what they're saying is that's not karate as I think it should be done. Which is something different from the one we've just talked about, right? Because they may have a view and an objective about what karate should be. And therefore anyone who's doing it differently is, well that's not karate, right? Again, I think we need to be a broader church on that. So personally, you know, I, I like the self-defense elements of it. You know, I, I like things that are like functional. Uh, that's the kind of karate that really appeals to me. But I get that some people like doing it as a points-based sport. And I get that people like doing it as art. And, and, and I respect that. And I get it. It's not for me. But, but, but I, I get why they like doing that way. And they, they should be able to do it that way. I'm not going to try and tell them they shouldn't. If they want functional skills, then, you know, training in those ways probably won't be the way to develop functional skills. 
So we can be critical of other approaches when they make given claims. That's healthy too, right? But, but in terms of someone who says, no, I'm doing it as art and I like doing it as art, I have no right to go, well, that's not karate because you should do it the same way that I do it. You know, that's the dictatorship. It's not healthy, right? It, we, we have lots of different views about what karate should be. And in this modern age, the wonderful thing is we can all freely share those ideas as I'm doing now. And what you'll find is in the marketplace of ideas, the ideas that attract a lot of people and a lot of people see value in, they'll gravitate around. You know, we've definitely seen that in the last 20, 30 years with karate uh, returning to its functional roots, you know, returning to being a, a, a pragmatic system, a pragmatic system, but also not being adverse to taking on new things. You know, there's the, a the wide kind of practical karate community, you know, that are rooted in that tradition. But as I've said before, roots, the jobs of roots, if you take to a plant, is they encourage growth. They're there to give stability so new growth can occur. You know, if, if the, ro the, the, the tree's not growing, if there's no new growth, it's dead. The roots have failed. You know, so we, we, none of us, none of us have this right to define karate as to what it should be for, for everybody else. We can have our own preferences and we can critique each other's ideas when given claims are made. It's healthy. We should have those open debates. That's, that, that's, that's a good thing. When people say that's not karate because I think karate should be different, well, good on you. You know, great. You go do your karate and leave everyone else to do theirs. You know, and if your karate is so great, you don't need to claim to be the sole arbiter of karate. You don't need to claim to be the gatekeeper, right? People will naturally be drawn to it. Um, so, yeah, you see that quite a lot as well. That's not karate as I think it should be. I mean, chill out a bit. Realize that, you know, it's. Karate is a broad church. There's, there's lots of elements that appeal to lots of different people. And none of us have the right to say this is karate and only karate and everyone else should go away and practice something else. Yeah, you, you find the karate that's right for you and there are many different types of karate. So like it or not, there are many different types of karate today. Not just talking about style variants, I'm talking about ones with fundamentally different objectives. There's WKF style points karate, there's uh, karate as culture, there's karate as art, there's karate as full contact competition, there's karate as it might apply in MMA, uh, there's karate as it would be used for self-defense. There's lots and lots of different types of karate that people do, or a mix thereof, uh, of them that they'll do. And in addition to that, karate has also changed over time. So when people go, that's not karate, what they're really saying is that's not karate as it was done. That's not karate as it is done. That's not karate as I think it should be done. Or that's not karate as I have done it. Right? But, but the fact is you will be able to find karate out there, past and present, right? whose karate will be the same as yours. No one has universal claim over that label. Right? It, it belongs to everybody. So in my case, you know, I definitely regard myself as a karateka. I, I love the traditional katas. I see great utility and value in them. Breaking them down has been a hugely rewarding experience. It, it, in doing so, you know, it expands what karate is. We have the trapping of karate, the throwing of karate, and all the stuff that you see in the old text as well, the chokes, the strangles, the cranks, all that kind of fun stuff. You know, so I've got all the older stuff in there. And or some people wouldn't see that older stuff as part of karate. Well, it was, you know. And there's also things that I've kind of brought into my karate. So, for example, one of the things that I have in my drill is, we, uh, in my dojo, we have a, a two-person ground fight in kata, you know, to introduce the basics of holds and escapes for students, right? It's something I created. Right? So that's not traditional. But, but as I pointed out in the rest of the video, right, roundhouse kick, you know, it wasn't a traditional kick that long ago. So if people like this drill, and I've taught it to lots of people, and they stick practicing it, who knows, you know? Maybe in 100 years' time, people will be talking about this traditional groundwork drill, this traditional karate groundwork drill, because I've made it part of karate as, as, as I do it, you know? And, or maybe not. Maybe they'll find something better, and that's good too, right? So long as karate's heading in the right direction, I'm happy if I play a part or I don't. You know, but, but I just want to see it continually prove, uh, improve over time. So you've got those things in history. Then you've also got the more uh, personal things where people have very strong views about what karate should be. I've said before, I think when people are making empirical claims about what works and doesn't work and stuff, you know, then we can challenge those claims and that's fine. But, but if people have a different objective to you, 
I'm doing this as art and I just like the way it makes my body feel and I like the movement. You have no way to tell them, no, you should be training in a more realistic way. If that's what's working for them and they know what they're doing, let them have half it, you know, so that's fine. So lots of different goals. The other thing is, you know, people have this idea that, you know, I alone was taught the one true karate and any variance away from that is not karate. Well, again, I think we need to put that to bed as well. You know, like I say, you know, Guards and punches, that was part of my karate since day one, right? I learned that before I learned my first kata, do you know what I mean? Same for my students today too, right? It'll be one of the first things that they, uh, they learn how to do. And of course, in my case, you know, I've had lots of different instructors and I've taken different things from them and I've melded it all together. So it's in part what my instructors have shown me, and it's in part what I've developed and the way I've infused it all together. And I pass it on to my students and they'll do the same. You know, they'll train under other people too and they'll have other ideas. And the karate continues to change and evolve. So karate is not something fixed. It's something that changes from person to person, from group to group, and certainly from year to year. So to say something's not karate would suggest that you somehow feel you have a universal right to pick this one viewpoint from this one point in time for this one objective and then say, no, that's karate and nothing else. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, that's never the way it's been before. You know, karate has always been a, a, a broad, eclectic thing. Its very origins are found in taking different things from different teachers at different points in time. That's how karate was born. And that's how karate will continue to grow.